All right, so I'm gonna just give a quick tutorial on how I do my vectors. And to start with, the program that I use is Inkscape, which is a open source program. You can download it for free. It's very simple, very easy to use, and allows you to do a lot with it. Which you know, it's not gonna be as good as any other, like programs like Illustrator and Photoshop. But hey. What do you, what can working as for free? So, I'm just going to do a quick little, just little pieces of this, uh, my recent derpy vector to, uh, illustrate just a few of the techniques that I do. And so, here's the base sketch that I started with, uh, first done it by hand. Um, so to start is, you know, I'm not going to get too in-depth with a lot of stuff here, but, um, you'll want to make a few layers which you can do that by uh, right here where it says layer and you can go to add layer and you get this little box that says you know where you can add a layer and you know this you can, where you can name it and then you can add it and you know depending on what layer is selected you can add it as a sub layer to the current below the current layer or above it so you know create layers based on what, what you're gonna do So I have quite a few layers here. There's the outline, the color. Um, with the original, there was some text. Um, there was a reflection of the text, and then the background bubbles of uh, Derpy's cutie mark behind her. So we're going to stick with the outline, since that's what I'm just going to be messing with here. And so let's get started. In Inkscape, the, pro the first couple of windows that I like to have open is first, I'm going to come up here to my toolbar, and I'm going to go to Object and open up the fill and stroke. That brings up this drop down menu over here where uh, we'll get into that in a minute. And then I also like to have the layers one open sometimes, which I will go to, oh crap, what was it? Right here at the bottom. This brings up the layers drop down window over here as well, where you can mess with its opacity, moving layers up and down, merging them together, things like that. So let's see. So now the tool that we're going to use to actually make your lines is over here. This one is the Draw Bezier Curves and Straight Lines. So we're going to go ahead and click that. Now it's choosing where to start is always the hard part. When it's once you do it a few times, you get used to it. But I always I always usually start with the hair. Just I don't know why. It's just easier. So. We're gonna just gonna really quickly. We're just gonna pick like the points where they start and end. So you know the hair starts there. There's a point. Here's another point, and so on. And we'll go all the way around. Now, once you have that, we're gonna hit enter, and now you have your line set. So now we're gonna come over here to the fill and stroke window. And we're gonna click on stroke style, and we're gonna set the thickness. Now, depending on how big of an image the image is that you're working with, well, if it's a really big image, your line width is going to have to be thicker than usual. If you're working with a really small screen capture that's say only like 200 by 200 pixels, um, your line your uh, line width is going to be thicker with smaller values, and so on. So, if I remember correctly, this one was uh, 20, no, that's a little big. I think I did about 18 for the line width just to kind of get things rolling. So now once you have that set, we're going to come over here and select this uh, edit paths by nodes or you can hit commit or you can hit F2. So now you see you get this nice little where you see the red line running through everything. Now we're going to simply drag the lines to curve them. So now I can freely drag this anywhere I want. Boom. So then I'm just going to do this to all the pieces just to kind of give it, you know, that organic, no, I guess organic isn't the right word, but I guess the show style feel. And, you know, since this is based off of a sketch, you know, I'm not going to go and follow the exact line, you know, I'm just going to get a basic, you know, curve, you know, something that I think feels right. 
something I think goes with it. Blah, blah, blah. So now you'll notice, pay attention to this corner right here. As I move this, you see how that corner, the corner on either side disappears with the sharper angle. There's a way to fix that. So it's, I have one right here, which, you know, if I decrease that, you know, it brings that point back out, but I don't want it because I don't want to make, bring this line that I'm too far down because then it just, it doesn't look right. So I'm going to come over here to this window again, and you have this, uh, this little selection called miter limit. You're going to increase its value and it should bring that point back out. So you decrease it enough, it goes away, you increase it, it brings it back out. So you can, so then that's what we'll do to kind of bring those points back out if you ever run into that. So now that we have the basic outline set, now I'm going to hit the key command, Control alt c Now, what this does is called stroke to path. That's up here. You can do the same same function up here from the um, from your toolbar. Go to path, come down to stroke to path, and you can click it, or you can do control alt c. Now, what this does is this brings out the nodes. This is where you can mess with this uh, the path, basically how the lines look. So now, one thing I like to do is kind of make the hair seem random, so I'm going to like drag a few nodes, make a few spots seem thicker or thinner than usual, just to kind of give it that little extra character that I, I think goes well with it. So you know, kind of like that. Hit escape, kip a couple of times to let go of the object, and now you get to see what you've done. <coughs> Now, since now there's the hair, so I'm going to move on to the ear. Any other part of the outline that you want to work on. Now, I'm actually going to work on this ear over here because this is a good little, little something I want to illustrate here. Sometimes these S-curves can be hard to do. So, you can either do it this way where... First off, you know, find your points, you know, like we started with. Mark off your endpoints there, hit enter. Come over here to the stroke, fill in stroke and set your line width. Mine was 18. Then you're going to come back over here to the edit paths by node so you can freely drag the lines and make them curve. So there's a couple ways you can do these S curves. You can do them by simply you drag one this way drag the bottom edge of the line this way and drag this edge this way and you can see what it accomplishes that's usually that takes a little bit of practice just because it's it's kinda guessing on where you need to drag that line because if I drag it at different spots say if I say if the first drag I did was down here then the second one was up here you see how all that lines up pretty good but if I drag a little higher up here and then I come back you know to the same spot it looks a little, you see like how this curve is a lot softer. So if I stay low, see how it changes it to where it's this bottom kick down here is a little bit sharper than the last, than the uh, previous one. So I'll stick with that. So now that we have that, we're going to hit the key command, control, alt, C, which brings out the nodes, which the ear... Now, the outline of the body, I'll usually leave alone, maybe at the ends here where the lines kind of touch, I might thin them out a little bit, but it's the hair, since hair is random, I usually try to give that, you know, like that thick and thin fill by dragging the nodes around. The body, the body outline I'll usually leave alone, you know, unless, you know, there's a point, a part where it comes to a point, like down here on the leg where it's, you want the body part the body outline to come to a point, you know, you'll have to touch that, blah, blah, blah. We'll get to that in a minute. So I'll move on over here. I'll start at my points. There's another point. There's another point. And here's the end of it. Hit enter. Come back to fill and stroke and set your line width. Now you're going to come back to edit paths by nodes or hit F2. 
which lets you again drag your lines to set the curves. Now there's more than one way to do this to to lay down these lines. I mean, when you're working with the B, the Bezier curves, the lines that we draw, if you see I come out here and if I click and hold that click, I can then drag this like this and get my curve that way. See, but now the following line will want a curve as well, which I've run into issues trying to work with that before. So I've found that just simply setting the line, then coming back with the uh, the uh, edit path. What is that? Stupid thing. The edit paths by nodes and just dragging the curves to where I want them is just simply easier. It's easier for me. I'm not sure how everyone else works. You know, I've seen people working with Illustrator, and they've uh, they do, they don't do it that way. But you know, there's no right and wrong way. So now we have this outline set. I'm gonna hit the key command, Control Alt C, to uh, stroke to path, which brings out the nodes. Now at the bottom of the ear right here is just is a spot where. is where the body outline comes to a point. So you know, I'll just try and find that happy medium. See now, when you're working with the nodes, you'll get these handy little... Uh, these, these nodes out here control how the line, the outline curves. So you know, it's you bring it closer, it brings the curve... you drag this closer to the node, it brings the curve closer to the node. You pull it farther away, it brings that curve farther away. So you know, these are good ways to just slight get that nice little fine tuning and tweaking to your lines. So if you'll notice my hair the hair's outline, you know, now doesn't match. So I'm gonna click on the hair. I'm gonna click on the hair to bring its nodes out. And I'm gonna just gonna drag and drop drag them into the hair. So you know if I keep my th you, you, you kinda gotta play with it. You know, keep it inside that outline but also keeping your line width, you know, just to keep everything flowing nicely. You know, I'll come down here. See if you now I'm gonna come down here and add a little detail to the bottom of the ear where the uh, outline of the ear continued. You know, just like that little that little thing like that. Now if you want to add a node onto the line somewhere, just come over to the line and double click. And now you have that node. So I mean, that's another spot where you can add, and then like you get these little things to mess around with it again. But I don't need to add that there, so I'm not going to worry about it. So now I'm going to come up, and you know, here's a spot where I'll mess with the outline. You know, I want the outline of the ear to thin out as it goes lower. So I'm going to move this node just to make the bottom of it thin out. You know, just to give it. Excuse me give it that nice fill. Let's see. We'll do this edge of the face over here. Some of these are usually pretty easy, so you know, start and end your line, hit enter. Set your line width. Come back over to edit path by nodes or again hit F2. Which, yeah, I'm going to say these a couple times just so you know you can remember them. So, you know, set your curve, hit Control Alt C. Oh, I guess I should say also I'm working from a PC, not a Mac, so I'm not sure what the key commands are for those. But you know, hit hit Control Alt C to uh, stroke to path, or you can go up to path again and select stroke to path. You know, 